Hello and welcome to tonight's look at the Art of Magic the Gathering Ravnica. This is part three of three and we'll be looking at the final four guilds. The first guild we'll be looking at is the Gruul Clans. Raiders of the Ruins The Gruul clans are a wild people in a civilised land, a loose affiliation of savage bands that squat on the fringes of Ravnican society. They shun the centres of civilization, which they see as a source of weakness, and instead haunt Ravnica's alleyways, abandoned zones and ruins. They want to see the edifice of civilization torn down, so the plane can return to the pure wilderness that thrived before the city grew to cover everything. Then the true order of nature would be restored, the unbridled and brutal state where only the strong survive and the strongest rule. In a world covered with city streets and towering buildings, the gruel are the most out of place, the most ill at ease and the most eager to topple it all and start fresh. Warfare among the clans is constant and almost ritualistic, reinforcing their doctrine of the survival of the strongest, and they frequently foray into more civilised areas to secure goods and to wreak havoc. Savage Foes the Gruul clans are made up of a variety of races, many of them large enough that they would have difficulty ma navigating the streets and buildings of the city if they wanted to. Sometimes the line between a thinking member of the clans and a fierce monster doing a clan's bidding is hard to draw, since the stupidest giants and the smartest beasts are not far apart in intelligence. Humans Gruel humans are fierce warriors, berserkers and shamans who embrace and embody the notion that the strong survive. They are the most numerous race in the Gruel, though by no means a majority and are found in every role among the clans. In addition to humans, there are goblins, ogres, giants, centaurs, Beashino, Hydras, Worms, Elementals, and Beasts in the Gruul Clans. The Gruul are composed of several autonomous clans, each ruled by a powerful chief. New clans occasionally form under ambitious warlords, even as other clans are occasionally challenged, defeated, and wiped out. In general, clan allegiance transcends racial differences, and each clan is a heterogeneous mix of different races. The Burning Tree Clan is the most fearsome and powerful. The Gore Clan is led by a two-headed ogre named Rurik Thar. The members of the Scab Clan share a ghastly collection of scars and bodily mutilations. The Bolrak clan is unusual amongst the Gruul clans in that it excludes members of the smaller races. The Slizd clan is a clutch of sly, stealthy warriors. The Zertar clan is notable for its fierce belief in what they call the Old Ways. And the Gravelhide clan believes that resilience is the truest measure of strength.
In the time before the guilds of Ravnica were formed, the Gruul were a collection of druids and shamans who celebrated and claimed the wilds of the plain. With the establishment of the guild pack, the Gruul were charged with tending the wild places of the world, protecting them from the spread of civilization. Obviously, the Gruul failed at this task, as Selesnya cultivated nature, Simic manipulated it, and the Golgari stewed in its rot. When the last towering druid tree fell and the last sacred grove was dug out for a stone quarry, the spark of rage that still burns in every cruel heart was kindled. That spark is an all-consuming need for vengeance against civilization and those responsible for this so-called progress. This is a ravager worm swallowing a griffin. Most members of the cruel clan are warriors called Anarchs, whose violent upbringing is focused on the task of tearing down the edifices of civilization, both physical and institutional. Among certain members of the clans, though, that simmering fury is channeled into various forms of magic, powered by rage, and directed towards the same violent end. into the rubble belts, the different locations in cruel society, and finally a little look at the relationships the cruel have with other guilds in Ravnica. So the cruel mana base is red and green, and often cruel decks will involve large creatures, perhaps with haste or trample seek to damage an enemy's life quickly and brutally. Boros Legion Righteous Soldiers Clad in shining armour and righteous seal, the soldiers of the Boros Legion take up steel against the corruption and lawlessness that gnaw at the soul of Ravnica. Combining the force of law with the military strength to back it up, the Boros are hard at work forging Ravnica into a just society, a safe and healthy community for all. In garrison throughout the sprawling city, rank upon rank of disciplined, brave, stalwart soldiers stand firm against gruel raids Demir infiltration, Golgari corruption, and the subtle, sinister influence of more nefarious foes. The angel Aurelia leads the Boros Legion. She drove the belligerent, conviction-focused philosophy of the Boros in recent years, but her philosophy has changed, in part due to her interaction with the planeswalker Gideon Jura. Her attention shifted to focus on the ordinary citizens who were caught in the middle as the guilds clashed, who suffered enormously while battles raged around them, and she began to realise that something more important than conviction should impel the Boros to action, justice. This is Aurelia. Angels occupy the highest tier of the War Boros Guild, from Aurelia down to the angelic hosts of holy warriors and advisers in leadership. Their opinions and advice are deeply respected in the Guild, even though they are not above the machinations of mortal politics. Boros angels fall into three categories, reflecting their place in the Guild's hierarchy and their military roles. War leaders, fire mains, and battle force angels. Boros perceive two kinds of threat to their work and their existence, the usual military threats and the danger of infiltration. They are accustomed to military threats, 
and they are building up their fortifications to ensure that they are not overrun by guru marauders or stormed by Azorius forces when the Senate inevitably decides to crack down. They have established new strongholds near Gruul territory in particular, but in general they prepare for a military threat the same way they always have, by being a stronger army. Here's a list of some Boros garrisons including the flying fortress known as Parhelion II, a great aerial hall home to the angels. Soldiers and spellcasters most soldiers in the Boros Legion are humans, not an overwhelming majority, but still a significant one. Minotaurs, giants, and a handful of Vyashino make up most of the rest, but members of every race are welcome to join, even the occasional goblin. Minotaurs have the reputation of being both fierce warriors and clever strategists. Most of the giants in the Boros Legion come from a single clan, the Skorskow. Swift Blades are the vanguard of the Legion, the elite marines were the first ranks into any conflict. Sky Knights, mounted soldiers on rocks, are a frequent sight in the skies above Ravnica. Ember Mages, the combat mages of the Boros Legion use fire magic to back up combat troops. Fire Fists, in the Boros Legion, the position of guild mage is held by zealous warriors who combine powerful magic with great combat prowess. Combat healers are an essential part of Boros operations. Magically animated elemental soldiers known as flamekin serve as scouts and shock troopers. And the Boros sometimes use trained war dogs in battle. Tajik, Blade of the Legion. Tajik, a guild mage who carries the title of the Blade of the Legion, is the highest ranking non angel in the Legion and maintains close communication with Aurelia. However, he is not always in perfect agreement with Aurelia, and recent events in Ravnica have set them at odds. There is a section on the attitudes and relationships that the Boros Legion have with other guilds. So the Boros Legion's mana base are the colours red and white. And, as might be expected by their name, the Legion, in games of Magic the Gathering, Boros decks often summon a large number of small, powerful small creatures to overpower the enemy with numbers. Selesnia Conclave Like a thriving garden, carefully tended and abundantly fertile, the communities of the Selesnia Conclave are a harmonious union of nature and civilization. The guild's dryad leaders enjoy intimate communion with the Mat Selesnia, a vaguely personal manifestation of the soul of Ravnica. 
They transmit the will of this world soul to the close-knit Selesnya enclaves, uniting them in a dream of embracing all of Ravnica in peaceful union. In the meantime, though, the Selesnya conclave is growing an army, preparing to resist the ambition and destructive impulses of the other guilds and fight, if necessary, to defend their way of life. The Selesnya Guildmaster is a dryad, actually three dryads who are united in body, will and soul as they sought communion with Matt Selesnya. As a whole, they are named Trostani, and usually Trostani speaks with a single voice to communicate the will of the world soul. Even so, she has three distinct personalities who each embody part of the Selesnya ideal, order, life and harmony. This is Amara Tandris, an elf healer, who also helps to lead the guild. The Long View Despite all the growing tensions gripping the plain, in the Long View of the Selesnya Conclave, not much has changed. Ravnica is troubled, but Ravnica is always troubled. The Guild Pact is absent, but the Guild Pact comes and goes. The world soul has not changed. The will of Matt Selesnya has not changed. The Selesnya conclave is to grow as always. Its strength lies in its numbers. Central to Selesnya philosophy is the ideal of harmony between the verdant life of nature and the edifices of civilization. The Izzet would pave over every living thing in their zeal for progress, and the Gruul would raise every building to rubble so nature could flourish, but the Selesnya believe in a middle path, a peaceful coexistence that marries green growth, abundant life, and all the comforts of civilization in a beautiful, peaceful union. Members of the Selesnya conclave typically belong to races that are naturally inclined to harmony with nature. Elves are prominent among the sentinel scouts and archers of Selesnya. Centaurs are physically powerful and adept at combat, combining the roles of heavy infantry and cavalry. Humans are numerous but not prominent in Selesnya. Dryads are perhaps most attuned to the will of Matt Selesnya, so they serve as visionaries and spiritual intermediaries. Loxodons are among the strongest and fiercest soldiers of the Selesnya. They lack the scent or speed, but make up for it in lumbering relentlessness. The people of the Selesnya conclave live in harmony with nature, not just inanimate nature, but animals, plants, and elementals that to varying degrees embody the forces of nature. Many Selesnya buildings, temples and paths are protected by carnivorous plants. Selesnya elementals are usually composed of roots and brambles intertwined together, and the Selesnya conclave is quite proud of its worms. This is a worm. They're huge and they travel underground. Faith and Might Under the guidance, wisdom and leadership of the Voda, each Vernadi is a relatively flat organisation, defined more by role than by hierarchical status. Although the Guild teaches the importance of subsuming the individual will to the good of the Conclave, it celebrates the diversity of individuals, in the same way that a field of different crops is healthier than a field of a single crop. 
the most fundamental division of roles is between military and religious positions. Spellcasters fill both military and religious roles among the Selesnia. They believe that their magic, like the rest of their lives, is a gift from Matt Selesnia, so they call their magic Doruvati, which translates to the gift. And once again, there is a list of attitudes and relationships the Selesnia have with other guilds. Simic Combine The secrets of life lie exposed in the laboratories of the Simic, and nature's wonders are plumbed and catalogued in their research notes. Before we move on to the Simic Combine, I should have briefly said that the Selesnia Conclave's mana base is rooted in white and green, and as such has access to healing spells, and spells which cause proliferation amongst its ranks. But back to the Simic Combine. Though the Simic Combine's original mission was to preserve the natural world even as Ravnica's cities continued to grow, the Simic have come to believe that nature and civilization must adapt to one another in order to preserve both. Historically, the Guild's approach to its mission has been one of incremental progress towards a utopian ideal, and it remains more aloof from politics than other Guilds. Its fundamental utopian mission remains unchanged by political instability, and the physical isolation of its laboratories shields them from immediate harm. But in the midst of growing tensions, the Guild's leadership has been turned over to a faction that advocates more rapid and dramatic adaptation. This change in leadership is rooted in a philosophical division that has formed two factions within the Simic Combine. The older faction is called the Utopians. The leader of this faction is a merfolk biomancer named Zagana. While exploring what it would mean for the civilized world to adapt, a portion of the Simic Combine pursued a deepening interest in sociology and politics which led to the growth of the Adaptionist faction. The elf biomancer Vanifer came to view guild relations as an ecology of their own, existing in a state of fragile equilibrium. And, like any ecosystem, it was vulnerable to the cascading effects of the smallest imbalance. She was among the first in the Simic to identify the mounting tensions between the guilds, and she began preparing for a war she came to view as inevitable. Zonots and Clades. The Zonots are the primary geographic division among the Simic. Each one is a distinct Simic habitat with its own culture and ecosystem, as well as a leader called the Speaker. The Speakers of all nine Zonots form the Speaker's Chamber, and they elect a Prime Speaker from among them to serve as the Simic Guildmaster. The current Prime Speaker, Vanifer, is the Speaker of Zonot 3. She displaced Zagana, who remains the Speaker of Zonot 1. More recently, however, some re Simic researchers have started to organise themselves into more outcome-driven groups called projects. And a secondary division, sometimes aligned with geography, most often spanning multiple zonots, is based on specific fields of research. These are the clades. Three clades hold key importance among the Simic Combine, and two projects are becoming increasingly prominent. The Hell Clade focuses on protection, defence and durability. Its efforts range from strengthening exoskeletons to stabilising zonot walls. The study of movement is the Fin Clade's focus, as well as the movement of resources through systems. The Gaia Clade. Cyclical patterns and metamagic are the Gaia Clade's specialisation. Its projects include finding ways to redirect or nullify magic and advancing the Wilds Initiative, which seeks to revitalise the natural world in the uninhabited places of Ravnica. 
The large-scale Guardian project, headed by Vanifer in Zone Art 3, has turned out vicious amphibious guard creatures, as well as human and elf hybrid creatures, that abandoned much of their original morphology in favour of an array of bioweapons and enhancements. The secretive Crypsis project developed strategies for obscuring other guilds' view of Simic and infiltrating their operations. This includes literal camouflage as well as magic designed to hide knowledge or operations. Since the opening of the Zonoths, Simic philosophy has embraced a pair of complementary ideas, the Holdfast Principle and the Upwelling. The Holdfast Principle advises members of the Simic Combine never to stray so far from nature that they become adrift. The rank and file of the Guild tend to stay close to their Zonoths and make only short forays into the wider city life because of this principle. But the principle doesn't make them isolated or xenophobic because of the strong influence of the other philosophical idea, the upwelling. The upwelling suggests that the new and enlivened replace the old and depleted in an unending cycle, bringing constant refreshment and renewal. This is Prime Speaker Vanifer. Vanifa considers herself a superior life form, an elf whose extensive self experimentation has transformed parts of her body into protoplasmic ooze. She believes that she embodies the Simic's utopian ideals, and the work that transformed her could never have occurred through slow incremental progress like the utopians advocate. Only bold and decisive action could create such a being, who absorbs nutrients and oxygen through her membranous skin and rests part of her brain at different times so she doesn't need to sleep. Under Vanifer's leadership, the entirety of the Simic Combine has aligned with the Adaptionists. Some utopian experimentation continues, but the majority of the guild has been turned to more urgent work. This is Speaker Zagana from Zone Not One. Regal and reticent, Zagana always maintained that she served as Prime Speaker only at the sufferance of the Speaker's Chamber. The chamber, she said, could revoke her status at any time and appoint another member, Prime Speaker. After her ouster by Vanifer, Zagana returned to the seclusion of Zonot 1, which is the smallest Zonot and has always tended to keep quiet. She did not remove herself from public life, however. She has been a vocal advocate for the utopian vision, opposing Vanifer's more extreme initiatives and engaging in outreach to other guilds. book then goes on to list the other Zonots. Diverse life forms. The central work of the Simic Combine is speeding the process of nature's adaptation and evolution, which involves magically modifying organisms of all kinds to prepare them better for the dangerous and ever-changing urban environment. Sapient humanoids and deep-dwelling aquatic creatures alike are subjected to Simic improvement and experimentation. Within the guild, there are humans, Vidalkin, elves, Crassus, which are non sapient, simic hybridized life forms, Benthid, which tend to be very large creatures, mostly amphibians, crustaceans, and marine reptiles, and sky swimmers. Finally, the book looks at the attitudes and relationships the Simic have with other kilts. So, the Simic mana base is blue and green, and some of the more recent rules mechanics involving the Simic have been focused on adaptation, as the adaptationists have taken control of the guild, where 
creatures are evolved into more powerful versions of their starting selves. That is the last guild in Ravnica and the end of our mini-series. I hope you've enjoyed looking at these guilds and as ever I wish you peaceful sleep and pleasant dreams. Good night.